So throughout this, I say Catrice, which obviously is not her name. Her name is Cheetah. So I do apologize. Uh, my mind was somewhere else. <sighs> All right. So it is Christmas. So happy Christmas. Um, uh, happy holidays. And uh, yeah, I mean, this came out today. It's uh, re You read the title. It's obvious what it is. It's Wonder Woman 2, a.k.a. Wonder Woman 84. Um... So when it comes to the first one, I actually, I, I liked it, um, but I haven't seen it in a couple years, but I liked it. The first two acts, I definitely did like, I think they kind of, uh, the CGI and the battle, the most moment, for me it was the CGI uh, for, of the third act that kind of uh, ruined it a little bit, or ruined it somewhat for me, uh, but I, I liked it. Um, as, as you know, the stars Gal, Gal Gadot uh, and Kristen Wiig and Chris Pine and some others. Uh, obviously, this takes place in the 80s, in the early 80s, obviously, 84. Uh, a lot of 80 references in here, kind of like, um, it kind of immediately reminded me of, of uh, Stranger Things. Uh, the whole mall scene and then there's the, the opening definitely was a little bit uh not the opening but the uh the the scene in the mall was a bit uh kind of comical to it um a lot of and there's a lot of whole lot of jokes in here sprinkled in and stuff but they didn't overdo it for me at least uh and they weren't like really bad um so as you saw in the trailer people are questioning is how is Steve Trevor alive? Is it her imagining it or something? Or or was there a time period? And there's been around this time this came out, was announced. Uh, there's this kind of this trend between DC and um, Marvel of these multiverse universes now. And there was also a theory of him going time travel. What it is is something I wasn't expecting. He was brought back to life by this magic rock kind of crystals. Uh, I believe, yeah, obviously, it's a rock. Um, was created by evil god, and it was created and spread out through out history, and that ends up uh, killing these civilizations. Like the Mayans are referenced in here, um, but he's not fully back. What he is is he's he's in a I guess you say a spirit uh, inside. A, a human's body uh, that's already existed, um, which I, I, I necessarily didn't have an issue with. I, I thought that was interesting. It caught me a little off guard. Uh, how that happened is is you grab this rock and you you wish upon it. Now the catch of this is is that when you wish something, you get what you want, but it takes your dearest thing away from you. Uh, so it ends up taking um, order to get Steve back. Gal uh, Diana loses her powers throughout the movie. Um, she obviously gets them back, but there's definitely a part in there where she has to denounce the her her wish, and it's actually the help. It was really, really, really sad. It, I was literally hiding back, fighting back my 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 emotions of it. Um, it, it was between that and they do this this dirty thing with the music in movies where they they have the sad scene but they really go in with the the, the dramatization of the music and that's what actually is what gets you. Uh, I'm sure there's studies around that, um, but it's this far more I I'm understanding. There was definitely a part in there with Steve and um, Wonder Woman. Where they're in this futurist jet, it's in the 80s, obviously the fighter jets of Cold War. And uh, so they steal it and they end up uh, in the air and they see fireworks and they go through the fireworks. And then he, then Steve has an idea of going up above the clouds and you get to see the clouds, but you see them um, turning colors and stuff. I thought that was, and along with the music, obviously, and the music's always the key point in this stuff of feelings, I actually really loved it. I thought it was very beautifully done. Uh, I definitely loved it. 
Uh, actually, what actually caught me a surprise is the big Easter egg in here. They, they, I thought they were going to do it more throughout the movie, um, but they didn't. Is, is, uh, as you know, with Wonder Woman, and people were hoping this for the first one that either she flies, which she kind of does in this, uh, in this. I would call that more gliding, if anything, and uh, the whole rope on the, the lightning and stuff that's i guess you could call flying um but what she does is she harnesses power and she turns the jet into a divisible jet so i thought that was pretty cool um another easter egg they kind of did was to the 1989 batman movie uh Kristen Wiig is, is in this. Obviously, she plays Catrice. Um, a lot of people were... Well, we'll get to that in a second. But she has this part in there where her introduction uh, of the movie is. And she's this nerdy, uh, awkward, kind of uh, clumsy person. Uh, female in the, you know, just wearing dresses and stuff. And, you know, that type of thing. Um... But what I what what I got the reference was is obviously is is that's what they did with Selena Kyle when they first introduced her when she was the secretary of the bad guy, um, you know and, and the whole fumbling of uh, of the suitcase and stuff. Now I could be wrong, and I don't think they did that then. But you know what I mean. You you probably recognize that right away. And Selena uh, and there's also this coincidence that Selena. Um, Selena Kyle is also known as she was the Catwoman, so it, it fits. I don't know if they did that on purpose. I don't know if it's one of those comic book things where Catwoman came first and then they decided to make a different version, but copying from the idea of it and creating, um, oh crap, um, Catris. Um, you know, I. And but to the people who thought that were saying I read I saw um, were criticizing Kristen Wiggs being rolled into Catrice, the thing that are going to do justice. In my opinion, I thought she did a very good job, and I was actually surprised at how serious of uh, of acting she got into because she's I just I'm just only seeing her in comedies. And I just couldn't take it serious. I was actually one of those people that was a little bit on the uh, questionable side of uh, if she could or couldn't pull it off. We have been, there's been some people who we've questioned, uh, like Hugh Fledger uh, and stuff that uh, haven't pulled it off. And, um, you know, he, she did. She did a great job. I thought she did a, a very, very good job. Um, I wish there was more of her darkness on here of her her uh of uh her being this evil catress uh type of evil character uh they had a whole a good amount in here towards the third act and a little bit of a shining throw and a little scene uh which was actually kind of a, for a dc film uh i don't know why but uh under what we've been getting past three years other than uh, the joker is not a whole lot of gore so she was kicking this guy's teeth out so i was actually a little surprised i wish they kind of had a little bit more and a little less jokes but it wasn't a whole lot of jokes as i said um there was definitely a scene in the beginning that actually was the opener to the movie of uh diane bean i think she was 10 years old maybe yeah she had to be like 10 or 9 and there were I had these Olymp all female Olympics, obviously all, obviously all female, and so she cheats and she learns the lessons and stuff. I I don't understand fully what that message was and why. I mean, I understand the message, but why it was in there because I couldn't figure out where it laid on laid into the lesson in later in the movie. Um, uh, maybe I can now. I'm kind of more thinking about it because I just got over it, watched it at an hour ago. So I'm kind of, I'm thinking, it, yeah, it is because the towards the end. Um, and so, uh, Zimmerman's score, and here you know, uh, for his first name, 
it was it was it was throughout the movie it was really good um i was i don't know why i'm surprised to see that i honestly don't know who's alive and who's dead anymore uh when these these ones that i grew up in the uh, 80s and 90s and you know or 2000s of uh these these uh orchestra uh direct uh where do you call them um you know but i i was really good and they added to the first scene of it and I, it was really pumping me up and they, they they had a lot of in here and they did a great job with that um diana uh, oh man diana had a whole lot of badass scenes in here definitely a whole lot the cgi was great on them the cgi in general was great for the most part there was when it came to catrice and people criticized this in the trailer that it was a little bit uh hokey um, I have to say, in the final fight scene with Catrice, when she was the full cat, uh, definitely, um, have to agree. I have to agree, they didn't necessarily fix it, but it wasn't that bad as people made it out to be. I actually didn't bother me. It definitely wasn't as bad as the CGI of the uh, final fight scene in uh, the first one. I'll say that. Um... But yeah, there was a whole bunch of these fight scenes in here. It was really cool. There was my, my favorite fight scene in here. Definitely is the one where they're in um, the Middle East and head bad guy in here um, who plays I don't know his name, but he's the actor who plays uh, Mando in Mandalorian. And he was also the guy that got his eye guys guys eyes gouged out in uh, Game of Thrones, whatever season that was. Um, now, this is a huge spoiler, but I already put a spoiler in this, uh, alert in this. The end credit scene has a very, very cool um, a, a cameo, which I also call a shout out to the OG um, uh, Wonder Woman from the original TV show. I think it was in the 60s, wasn't it? Or 70s? Um, it was Linda Carter. And she's, uh, I mean,. She she's looks older, but she still looks you know pretty pretty, uh, you know pretty beautiful, um, and it's a reference. To, uh, it was I wish they would have had that little more, actually in the movie instead of the credit scenes, because her the person she plays was a a it's, there's an old story behind her the the gold winged suits. That all these men were uh, taking over the land and stuff, and uh, she and and so she sacrificed herself to save the uh, all the other women and children. Uh, she didn't die. I thought they the meant she died, but she, no, she didn't. She 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 lived, and then she um, you know just wandered the earth because you know these guy these women they they're like. They say they're not gods, but they are gods. I don't fully understand the which is which. Uh, I, I, to me, they're gods because they're called goddesses, and they live forever, and they're they're instructable. But uh, so they live forever, and so they had her at the end, saving from behind and stuff. And they just showed the eyes, and the eyes kind of looked familiar because they only showed above here when they were doing the flashback to that. Um, I flat out love this movie. I flat out love this movie. I wasn't sure what I felt about it in the first 30 minutes. Or I, I wouldn't say that. I'd say like 20 minutes. Um, but I, I absolutely love this movie. And I, I, I'm I'm not really into um, after Endgame, Marvel's Endgame and Ubisoft being... I'm just run out of, of, of caring for comic book movies. Um, I think the, the first movie that I finally actually got back into after Endgame that it actually made me kind of think of going back into being a set obsessed and loving comic books because uh, I was just taking a break was um, the Joker movie but it didn't um, don't get me wrong I actually love the Joker movie that was really good it was really depressing though uh, but I, I I would have to say that this is actually gearing me towards back onto the roots of of uh, my love of comic books um, it's not like I hate comic books. It's just I they have they they Marvel kind of ruined it for me by making so many nonstop per year. Every year there would be one out. So 
Uh, and then they would, then the DC would throw out movies in between, and then they weren't necessarily that good. There was ones that I did like, but they were okay. They could have easily been better. And I'll be doing the one on Justice League when that comes out next year. But I've gone on long enough. I absolutely love this movie, so you obviously know what I'm going to rate this. A solid, flat-out, 5 out of 5 axes. I strongly recommend that if you have not seen this and you do not like spoilers, so and then for you watch this and you do not have a problem with spoilers, I strongly suggest you watch it. I know you're probably going to, but I strongly suggest you watch it. So, Merry Christmas. I love you all. Stay safe. And uh, Skull.